Welcome, everyone. We are excited to kick off another vendor spotlight for this year's MSP GeekCon 2023. What is a vendor spotlight? It is where we allow select vendors the opportunity to formally introduce themselves to the MSP Geek community. We'll spend time learning more about them in their history, how they were brought into the channel, as well as drop some knowledge on us on how we could continue to evolve as a community. Better yet, guys, we'll have a brief Q&A to dive deeper and see how we can work together to be better for our MSPs and ourselves as engineers and technical professionals. Not familiar with MSP GeekCon? If you've been living under a rock, a pineapple, or your uncle's war prep bunker, MSP GeekCon is the first convention to cater to you, the technical professional, as an IT services firm. This is a conference that was created for you by the community, and I am honored to have been asked to interview our guest today. My name is Kyle Christensen, and I've been an MSP Geek member since the early days and also the founder of some well-known vendors in the space. I now spend my time mentoring and training MSP owners and operators to remove the complex barriers that prevent us from growing as organizations and individuals. Over the last 20 years, I have developed the necessary skills to ensure us technical professionals grow with the companies we support. But, you know, while I was, will be speaking at MSP GeekCon, I'm not cool as our guest. And I want you to picture this. You're a student studying all types of computer development, loving all the languages that are out there, and you're eager to learn as much as possible about the world of technology. You may be wondering what your future holds, what kind of problems you'll be solving, and what kind of impact you'll make on the industry. Well, let me introduce you to Jeremy Oakes, the founder of Automation Theory. Jeremy was just like you once, a student with a passion of technology and an insatiable curiosity for problem solving. He went to school for development and landed his first job at a large MSP, just like us, right? And as he worked his way up the ranks, he became the arm administrator at an MSP responsible for monitoring and maintaining the remote management and monitoring systems used. It was during that time that Jeremy began to notice a pattern. The problem the MSP was having with stability and security in their arm and footprint were common to many MSPs. This is how he stumbled into the MSP geek community to see how all of the rest of us were facing these problems. Jeremy then realized that there was an opportunity to create a solution that could help MSPs across the board. And thus, automation theory was born. He set out to create the tools that could automate common problems for MSPs, allowing them to focus on providing better service as a security footprint for their client. And you know what? One thing I don't want to forget is that his love for Star Trek. As a fellow fan, I'm sure you can appreciate the way that science fiction can inspire and drive innovation. When you combine that with a deep understanding of technology, you get someone like Jeremy, a visionary who's always been looking to push the boundaries of what's possible. Jeremy, welcome. Thank you. I appreciate you hopping on, brother. Yeah, yeah. It's great to talk with you, too. Hey, man. So tell us about automation theory. Tell us about you. What's cool? What's kicking? What's new? What's different? What you guys up to? Yeah. So uh, automation theory, we're a niche consulting firm based out of Wisconsin, and our mission is to secure and optimize the MSP tool stack and, you know, we daydream about a world where MSPs don't have to face ransomware attacks and your internal tools just work. Man, so, you know, go a little bit deeper on that, because I know us as professionals, us in the community, right? We, we, we like to we like show us what's under the hood a little bit. So what do you mean by expanding that security footprint? What do you guys mean about simplifying some of these tools? Yeah. So there are two sides to the automation theory shop. Uh, the first is what, you know, we'd call body armor for MSPs, and that's in the form of our proxy and WAF service. Uh, we have a drop-in solution to protect MSP tools from things like the Kaseya VSA type attacks. And uh, protecting an application is a lot different than protecting IT infrastructure. And, you know, that's why we designed uh, a service for it. And uh, we do that in a way where uh, it is kind of drop-in turnkey, but we can uh, custom tune it for uh, each MSP and you know meet the unique challenges and requirements. Everyone uses these tools differently, and we can uh, build something that's tailor fit and uh, create a solution that's effective and, in a weird sort of way, beautiful. That's pretty neat, man. You know, I, I it, it's funny because. We all go back and forth with, you know, how we're protecting our, our client stack sometimes. And we forget that at times, right, we need to put our own defenses up. And in the moment, I can tell you right now, have I operated an MSP, sometimes you don't really think about the security stack of your own software, especially when they're cloud-based, right? When they're, when they're SaaS-based. Mm -hmm. 
it's a lot easier to just assume that your upstream provider has done the wherewithal to make sure that their systems are uh, are protected. And sometimes we just take for granted and go, oh, they're SOC 2 compliant. Mm -hmm. So yeah. how did you stumble on that? Well, so there's a lot of people in the industry who have had experience with this with other applications. But uh, back in the day before automation theory, uh, I was the RMM administrator for a large MSP in northern Minnesota. I had about 10,000 remote agents in my wow. automate stack. And uh, we were, uh, as an MSP, gearing up for SOC 2 compliance. And I was also, you know, on the internal uh, security team uh, for that, along with the RMM hat. And so we were talking about, uh, you know, various uh, uh, attacks and uh, walking through a risk register. And uh, one of the things that, you know, you'd see stories about MSPs just having, you know, people break into their tools through like, you know, bad credentials, things like that. The industry guidance for years has been, uh, you know, patch your application and turn on MFA and that's all MSPs need to do. But uh, as soon as you start to see that, oh, hey, some of these more advanced attacks, they actually attacked the application itself. They were able to inject something. They were able to uh, exploit some bad code and all of a sudden manipulate the application, even if it was patched, even if you did have MFA, uh, even if you did check all your other responsible security boxes. That's really where the wheels started to turn. And so uh, there was a solution that uh, was implemented uh by that MSP, and and I realized, you know, being out in the MSP Geek community, that uh, nobody else had something like this. And uh, the the automation theory proxy service really came about after uh, there was a vulnerability uh, in Automate. Uh, Perch named it Enraged Duck, I believe. And uh, I might I might have my history flipped around there, but uh, there was the ability to go ahead and uh, through the agent installer, grab the server password and then string together some vulnerabilities and people in the community were, you know, saying, hey, go check your logs. There was this IP uh, over in Russia or China that was scraping automate servers. And I realized that, you know what? Uh, the rest of the community and everybody else who has this software would be it'd be worthwhile for them to have a solution and having you know implemented kind of a, a duct tape and uh, bailing wire uh, at that MSP. I realized that there was definitely uh, some complexity to doing that, and uh, the ability to roll your own solution uh, had some limits there. Dang man, and and you know. It was funny because when we were talking before we, you know, hopped into the show, right, you were looking, I was looking at your resume and I saw the pen testing certification. I saw the MySQL certification. I went, man, this guy went deep. Man, you, you, you were really trying to rip apart the hood to figure out what's going on. And I remember in the early days, especially back like, you know, when lab tech was super young, we're talking like 2011, 2012. That was the only way to use the software a lot of times was to go into the backend database because it wasn't the most easy thing to cooperate with. Um, and I'm, you were also telling me about this uh, this case study that you did. Uh, you mind uh, kind of going in a little bit on that? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I want to talk about the story of Chris, and he's the chief security officer of a large MSP in my home state of Wisconsin. And uh, to pre preserve security and anonymity. Uh, we don't identify in a, any of our clients further than that. But uh, Chris and his team uh, were looking to secure ConnectWise Automate. Uh, they had used uh, Kaseya in the past, and they had a firsthand encounter uh, with an exploit that pushed out crypto miners to the client endpoints through the RMM itself. Oof. And they were yeah, and they were <laughs> looking to reduce their attack surface. And you can obviously see their reasoning, right? And out of the box, Automate is easily enumerated by IoT scanners. And we talk about this a lot. And uh, at our session from MSP GeekCon, we're going to dive into the problems with enumerability and all that. But if you think about attacks like that, uh, you need to find your target. And 
uh, that's what really makes this enumeration a problem. If a bad actor finds a flaw, well, it's uh, a quick search away to find out uh, how many of these things are out in the wild. And we've used, you know, that showed an IoT data for research purposes before, and we've found over 7,000 automate servers out in the wild compared to about 900 for Kaseya VSA. So if you think about how bad the hold on, Kaseya hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You found 7,000 automate servers? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can't gloss over that. So there are 7,000 servers that you were able to find that possibly could have a vulnerability? Uh, yeah, how I would I would structure that if a bad actor. Yeah, I, found I might have said a that flaw. a little bit. Dirt. I might have said that a little <laughs> ignorantly. I apologize, but you're you're the expert. Yeah, yeah. So so if someone did discover a zero day exploit in Connectwise Automate, uh, for fifty bucks you can get a Shodan API key and then download the list, and you'd have seven thousand targets, and you script up a little bot quick, and you take the bot, you feed it the list of IP addresses, and tell it go run this exploit on these seven thousand devices, and that is basically how the global economy would grind to a halt. Because uh, that's you... that's that's a little crazy. Man. Yeah. It... So. You know, it's the it's these things that, you know, I think it's so important for us as professionals to know and realize. And it's it's, you know, no longer are the the IT days of just make sure it works. I, I think those are long behind us. Right. Because in IT for mm -hmm. so long, it was am I productive? Can the shit work? Hell, I even am, am guilty of using that in my sales pitch at my MSP. Right. Of saying, hey, Mr. Klein, as long as your shit works and your clients, your employees are productive, then we're doing a great job. I think those days are long gone. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, definitely the the IT landscape has changed so much, and uh, you know everyone out here in the community, you know, uh, a community like this, you know, we're full of people who are you know wise to that, but we still uh, we don't talk about problems like this or or how you'd you'd solve them, and there are. Uh, you know, in the past, we've posted, you know, data about, you know, what we found showed in, in this, that, and the other. And you have the the kind of old world thinkers out there on the internet uh, who just kind of roll their eyes to the data and they don't uh, think about the, the potential there. Because, yeah, truthfully, enumeration is a, a hard nut to crack. And, you know, even even MITRE says so. Uh, you look at, like, the attack framework and they say in there that, yeah, there's probably not much you can do uh, to uh, fix problems with reconnaissance. Well, uh, with a web server, especially an RMM tool that arguably you use more with bots than you do with humans, oh, yeah, there, there's plenty we can do to fix that specific problem and lucky for us, that is the uh, problem we're after, right? You're not going to hide your public website. You're not going to, like, there are certain things you want to be found. Uh, but I always like to call automate my production honeypot. And that's definitely something you don't want to be found. Dang. So uh, how, how did this relate back to Chris? So, uh, so yeah, Chris, uh, you know, he had firsthand experience with uh, how RMM security uh, can go off the rails. And uh, he was looking to protect his MSP. And uh, Chris's automate was like any other one. Uh, you can enumerate it. It wasn't fully hardened. And granular access controls were proving difficult to implement. Uh, they had made a couple passes at it, and it wasn't really uh, doing what they wanted it to do. So we worked with Chris and his team, and we... Uh, implemented a clustered reverse proxy for their automate and their control servers. And they opted for some very aggressive controls, only allowing agent traffic except for a list of IP addresses. However, for client access, we assisted them in implementing URL-based access controls. So over the phone, their techs could read them off like a, a short mini URL, and that would jump over the IP restriction and get them to, you know, the join a session page, regardless of whatever IP address their clients were coming from. Mm. So there's a little bit of an Easter egg hunt to kind of figure out some of the uh, the access URLs. And, you know, you can't just have a bot scrape all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, and, and that's something where, you know, 
uh, for that particular implementation. Uh, that's a URL parameter and you can treat it kind of like a password, you know, and we can rotate that as often as we like. You can change your short URL, but if a bot is scraping by IP address, and, you know, you uh, will dive into all of this in our actual session about protecting the tool stack against zero day threats. Uh, all the bot's going to get is a 503 proxy error saying that it can't find uh, what you're what the bot's looking for. And so uh, this is one, one of those things where it actually is a security control proper. Uh, knowing that there is a URL parameter uh, doesn't actually help you defeat the mechanism, just like knowing there's a door lock doesn't help you defeat it. You have to have the key. And it's the <laughs> same idea. You're really just adding that extra layer of now the door's a little bit harder to find. The door's a little bit buried in the back and there's some brush over it and there's trees over it, but you still need locks on the door, right? Yeah, yeah. In our presentation, we talk about, uh, and I don't want to give away too, a, give away too much, but we talk about the difference between armor and camouflage. And we actually have a little, uh, a fun little slide of, you know, an army tank out there and like uh, militaries all over the world. Uh, they have army tanks and, you know, that has both offensive and defensive security layers, but they, they paint it camouflage. And, uh, <laughs> they're, they're not hot pink? Right. Uh, the, <laughs> uh, yeah, correct. Uh, and so it, it's the same thing for, for the MSP technology. If you apply logic from across other disciplines, uh, when you're securing something valuable in your house, uh, the common recommendation is, you know, don't keep it uh, out in the open. If someone, you know, can see that you have, you know, some, you know, uh, very valuable antique through your window, they're just walking by the front of your house and they can see this valuable thing inside. Well, all of a sudden, uh, that becomes a target. Why? Because it's visible. The tanks are painted camouflage. Why? Because you don't want them to be visible. This is, uh, you know, common sense, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll flesh out the details in our, in our talk, but it's, uh, it doesn't catch on that way in the industry. We confuse uh, security through obscurity, like, you know, changing a port number uh, with actual technical controls to prevent discovery. Hmm. So I got some dumb questions for you because I've been like, I, I mentioned my age, right? Like I, when I started using lab tech back in the day, now, now ConnectWise Automate. So I know a lot has changed, but dumb question number one, is this just on-prem or have you found a way to do this for on-prem and cloud? We can service both on-prem and cloud. You get a better total security result uh, if you are on-prem. There are certain things that uh, we can't completely close the surface area if you're in cloud. But uh, with that with that said, uh, we can still protect a lot of the application. Uh, the, the big thing right now uh, on cloud for Automate, you can't uh, put IP restrictions on the agent traffic. And the reasons for that are, you know, pretty obvious from a support You don't have the firewall to connect wise. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Unfortunately, you, not. You can't control that. <laughs> but, uh, but uh, for for the rest of the application, uh, for the logins, the APIs, everything else in those uh, pools that you can IP restrict, uh, we can route that through our proxy service, which has WAF for deep inbound inspection. And so, with that, yeah, we can uh, protect against an awful lot in uh, in the cloud not the same as you were on-prem, but still light years better than uh, a plain basic uh, exposed automate or even plain Jane IP restrictions. I gotcha, I gotcha. So I got another one, a kind of a follow-up to that, which is obviously, you know, we have a lot of people watching today and not all of them may be using ConnectWise Automate, but you now may have kind of opened up some eyes to going, hey, is this all RMMs? Is this just my RMM package? Is is this something that we can go post about and say, hey, ConnectWise has a gaping hole? Like, give me a little bit more insight. Do you have any under insight on, like, is this something that's more widespread to other RMMs? Are you, is automation theory looking to approach this with other applications? 
Yeah. So this is going to be common across a lot of tools. So our our bread and butter is Connectwise Automate. Uh, we can definitely run other applications through our proxy. Uh, we have fully fleshed out uh, proxy and WAF rules for control, and we're running both Bitwarden and Hoodoo through our proxy, and we're in the process of building WAF rules for those applications. And those are you know, very popular out in the community. And uh, as we see the community start to adopt some of these other applications, especially uh, the self-hostable ones, uh, where we can, you know, provide the most bang for the security buck, uh, you know, we'll continue to uh, do R&D and get those applications uh, properly secured and uh, proxied. Nice. And with that, right, you know, some MSPs, like you mentioned, even the one that you worked for, right, that, you know, there is a scaling aspect. And I know back in my day, uh, automate and scaling it were always a, a cat and mouse game of figuring out how do you scale it? How do you break it into separate servers? How do you start to load balance to different services? And right, I think even at my point at my MSP, we had like four or five automate servers and started doing the nested doll action. Um, this, mm -hmm. Does the proxy service kind of scale with that? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, first things first, uh, under the hood, uh, you know, it's HA proxy and that's meant to scale. Uh, crazily uh you know like github uses ha proxy and you've never gone to github and have seen sorry we can't find that page uh, or you know some other proxy errors like ha uh, proxy can scale to the moon and likewise we can use that technology for automate proper uh the other side of the automation theory shop is uh the uh, quieter, less uh, chaotic world of database maintenance and administration, performance tuning and scaling. And uh, for those split out automate environments, we can use the proxy to go ahead and load balance and we can actually get really creative. Uh, there was a solution we recently implemented where uh, after a server migration, uh, this client, they had a number of Mac agents that all of a sudden came back to life in their automate. So it's basically overnight, you added 2000 agents and all of a sudden uh, their uh, server was uh, having some heartburn. And what we were able to do, we spun them up another web server and then we used the proxy and we were able to redirect all of the agent traffic to the second server, leaving the first server dedicated for the integrations and the staff to log in. So we offloaded the botnet completely. And as a result, they have an extremely snappy automate server and uh, their their stability problems went away when you offloaded uh, 8,000 agents to their own dedicated box. I'm almost thinking that's like a hidden value prop that's probably one of those sub bullet points that I could see some larger MSPs, you know, adopting your platform just because of that. Right, you know that denial of service that you do on your own automate server when you either you migrate it or right MNS, MSPs that do large M and A. Right, I go acquire a three mm -hmm. to five million dollar MSP that has five six thousand endpoints. Cutting those over isn't sometimes the easiest thing because I have to stage it, or you literally will denial of service your own automate server. So I can see this being something extremely clever to scale. Yeah. And uh, uh, we work with MSPs of all shapes and sizes from the kind of one and two man consulting shops all the way up to 20,000 agent plus automate stacks. So um, we can, uh, you know, we've seen an interesting cross section of the industry in both how you secure it and how you scale it. And uh, we can uh, build a custom solution to fit for whatever uh, an MSP has out there. I love it, man. I love it. So, hey, we're, we're almost out of time. So, you know, tell us a little bit about what your session is going to be. Yeah. So our session is going to be defending the MSP tool stack in a zero day world. And we're going to be talking about uh, attacks against MSP tools, specifically, you know, the on-prem variety. And, you know, there are thousands of MSPs running them out there and how to build out or A, how the attacks work, uh, how these bad actors are finding their targets and how the different stages of, of an attack go. So they've they found your target. Uh, how are they 
going ahead and pairing up these attacks? How is that being delivered? We're going to walk through the uh, cybersecurity kill chain as it relates to MSP hunting and MSP attacks. And then uh, we're going to talk about how to build zero-day resistant architecture. Uh, well, there is, uh, you know, obviously we have a solution for that. Uh, uh, there's, there's more to overall security and overall architecture than just, you know, slapping down a product. Everybody knows that. So uh, we're, uh, we're going to walk through what people need as far as creating that for themselves. Uh, we, we actually have, uh, we'll have a hard copy cheat sheet handout. And uh, by the time you're done with that session, you'll have a little blueprint that you can go back to your MSP and start to sketch out on the whiteboard. Hey, how are we going to build this? Awesome. That sounds cool, man. I, I know that's tactical, hands-on, and we always love that stuff. And uh, hey, I wanted to say I appreciate you coming on today. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate the opportunity and uh, looking forward to seeing you and everybody else at the conference. Oh, dude. Yeah, definitely. I think at this point, right, uh, I'll let you buy me a beer. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys and that's a wrap for today's vendor spotlight thank you jeremy from automation theory i hope you all enjoyed learning more about his journey and the amazing solution his company has to offer as always we want to thank the msp geek community for joining us and being part of this conversation your input and feedback are invaluable to the growth and success of our industry if you have any additional questions or you want to learn more about automation theory be sure to check out their website and connect with jeremy and his team to go ahead and pick his brain, go check out his session at MSP GeekCon. I'm sure it's going to be really educational and you know something that's going to add a little extra tools to your own toolbox to really help push this industry further. And uh, thanks guys for tuning in. Until next time, keep geeking out. of the MSP Media Network.